Free at last, free at last. Michael Flynn is free at last. And it's about time, too. So, some excellent news today. It turns out that Michael Flynn, the former national security advisor of Donald Trump, is finally going to make it out of the establishment hell that is the U.S. federal court system as Donald Trump is going to go forward and pardon him for the alleged crimes that he committed as his national security advisor. Of course, these crimes were mostly fabrications, as we know that the investigation was carried out by the FBI power couple, Lisa Page and Peter Strzok, who, as we know from investigations and different documents that have come forward, spent so much time sending love letters to each other and altering notes before court and setting up essentially a perjury trap of an interview um, with then FBI Director James Clapper in which the words were uttered ahead of time um, that they are going to take the kill shot on Michael Flynn. Not exactly subtle. But then again, I guess you shouldn't expect subtlety from a guy who looks like this. But, of course, as we know, the whole reason for that perjury trap interview was that Michael Flynn was alleged to be some sort of foreign agent for the Russian government. And the only evidence that anybody ever really had for that was the reality is he, at some point, a couple of years uh, before he was in the Trump administration, had taken a meeting with the Russian news site RT. Uh, he set up this whole RT gala meeting where he met with, you know, the heads of RT, and he went to a dinner where he sat next to Vladimir Putin. That was the big thing. It was like, oh, Michael Flynn, he's sitting next to Vladimir Putin. As if sitting next to Vladimir Putin somehow makes him some kind of Russian agent. It's like, Vladimir Putin, he's got this, like, magic dust on his suit or on his arms or something. He just, like, brushes it off, and it looks like flies onto Michael Flynn, and then Michael Flynn just becomes a Russian agent. Something like that. That's really what the allegation is. But the reality is, he was not in Russia with this RT meeting to be a Russian spy or to be some kind of foreign agent for the Russian government. He was actually there building bridges. And he was trying to have a conversation with the Russians about foreign policy. And he did an interview on the channel RT. And actually, as a matter of fact, if you watch that interview, which, by the way, I did because I do research. But if you watch that interview, he is actually booed several times by the audience for two reasons. One, he said that Assad was part of the problem in Syria. And two... He said that Iran was a bigger problem than Saudi Arabia when it came to terrorism. Oh, Assad is part of the problem. I mean, let's face it. Hey, come on. Sure. Iran exports a lot of terrorism. Now, I mean, w which attack were they behind? I mean, at, you know, we don't have enough time up here, but, you know, like I said, you know, uh, truth fears no questions. And, and I believe that because we can't. Yeah, none of those things are things that Russian agents say. Both of those things are counter to Russian interests. So no, he wasn't there as a Russian agent. He was there building bridges. That's what he was doing. Um, <clears throat> but that is really only one small part of the reason why Michael Flynn was ultimately targeted by the deep state and the FBI and these forces that were running counter to Trump and his administration at the time. And that is, the reality is, when you go back and you look at Flynn's record and you look at his views and his values... He is somebody that would have radically altered the course of American foreign policy had he become um, part of Trump's administration as the foreign policy advisor. If you look at what he believes, he was one of the most vocal voices in the Obama administration when he was there, but even outside of it, against regime change and against wasteful regime change wars, against neoconservatism, and against the values that were ruining American foreign policy at the time. And we can go back and we can watch these clips of him talking about his foreign policy views. Many people would argue that the U.S. actually saw the rise of ISIL coming 
and turned a blind eye, or even encouraged it as a counterpoint to Assad, and a secret analysis by the agency you ran, the Defense Intelligence Agency, in August 2012 said, and I quote, there is the possibility of establishing a That's declared a or undeclared <laughs> Salafist, it's not secret anymore, it was released under FOI, the quote is, there is the possibility of establishing a declared or undeclared Salafist principality in eastern Syria, and this is exactly what the supporting powers to the opposition want in order to isolate the Syrian... Those become, I argued about it. Did you say we shouldn't be supporting these groups? I did. I mean, we argued about these, the different groups that were there, and we said, you know, who is it that is involved here? And I will tell you that uh, I, I do believe uh, that the, the intelligence was very clear. And now it's a, it's a matter of whether or not policy is going to be as clear and as defining and as precise as it needs to be, and I don't believe it was. Just on, just on what you're saying, just to clarify here, you're saying today, today my understanding, And you can see from those clips that he was someone who was very much challenging the status quo. He was very much opposed to these adventures in Libya and these adventures in Syria. And he was pointing out how the United States at the time, under Barack Obama, was actually aiding Islamic terrorism through these policies of regime change, through wanting to start and go in and overthrow these governments, that that just was not working. And because of that, the Obama administration people had a big grudge against this guy and they were after him and they wanted to ruin his life and his existence. And these people like <clears throat> Peter Strzok and Lisa Page and all these other Obama officials in the administration essentially conspired to target this guy and get rid of him. And it's really obvious and apparent to anybody who's really paying attention. But again, that's not what the media is going to tell you. There's just like this guy's a horrible guy. Um, but no, I mean, it's really unfortunate that this had to happen to someone who was such an accomplished general and someone who had the best of intentions into getting into the Trump administration. But really, um, when it comes to Trump, the question is, he really, why didn't he do this earlier? It really could have been done a lot earlier. He could have been pardoned so much earlier, and it would not have hurt Trump at all to, for him to make that decision. And he really should have made that decision much earlier. But as far as Michael Flynn is concerned, I hold out the most hope and respect for him. I think that going forward, he can use this as a major opportunity. Now that he's been pardoned and he's going to be out of the federal court system, he can go out and he can start some book deals. He can start putting his face out there. And I really feel like he can be a big face in conservatism and sort of the Republican movement going forward if he really puts his mind to it. I think he can do that. And he might be in government again. You might see him again. Um, but yeah, just going forward, I want us to really pay attention to things like this and just see how powerful things like the deep state and just special interest in Washington can actually be to where they can target a person and ruin his life. And so I guess I hope going forward, we look at things a little bit better and we learn from our mistakes and hopefully we don't get fooled again.